Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the regular meeting for uh, the Wayham School Committee. Um, so happy to see all the folks here. Um, it is May 7th, and we're starting a little bit early today um, because we want to, and we're in an unfavorable light already. <laughs> um, we want to uh, do our rec uh, recognition and service awards for folks that have dedicated uh, a good part of their adult life uh, to Wayne Public Schools and to the students of Wayne Public Schools. Uh, so without further ado, um, I'd like to call on uh, our superintendent to start it off and then we'll call uh, the principals up to introduce these folks. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, good evening. This is a celebration. We're very thrilled to have all um, of our employees with us, and I would like to introduce Mr. Pallad Mr. Pal yes, Mr. Palladino, Mr. Palladino, the high school, the start. Uh, if we could, I'd like to have the committee out in front, please. done if Jeff can come on down here and I'll <laughs> embarrass him a little mr. Dunn is a math teacher at Wareham High School a very popular math teacher he's also the chess club advisor a mentor that we've relied on for many a years night school and summer school teacher for many a years he's the resident musician and sound man at all of our pep rallies we have a tradition every October, and I think, Dr. Sylvia, you may remember this one. Uh, he does the Monster Mash. He sings while playing the keyboards on the, uh, on the morning show. Stay right uh, there, Jeff. We're not done, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also, uh, in his spare time, uh, the lead singer uh, for, the Jeff, for the Jeff Dunn Band and for Dunn and Dunn. So uh, we're excited to have Jeff here tonight. And now we're moving on to the uh, Thanks, 20, 20 years. And uh, unfortunately, um, one of my custodians is very busy back at the high school and couldn't be here. But we certainly want to recognize uh, Gary McNeil for 20 years of service as a custodian. Uh, we're very lucky to have the next person as a staff member. Uh, brings a lot of uh, diversity. and. Uh, we, we, he's, he's a utility guy for us. He can do it all. He's a special ed teacher, a math teacher, and uh, we want to bring up Charlie Dyer. <laughs> Charlie has been very involved in the uh, student after school success program. He's a teacher. He's a former boys soccer coach for many years. Uh, he was a tutorer for the MCAS reinforcement program. And uh, I know he's very, uh, he's actively involved with his son and daughter in their athletic event endeavors, especially uh, the youth soccer. So we want to thank Mr. Dyer. I, I know he's not here tonight because he's also very involved with his two boys. I want to recognize uh, Dan Knott for 20 years of service. Dan is a special education department head. He's also the uh, head football coach, the physical fitness director, uh, he's been a member of the Alternative School Manual Committee. He's a former track coach. And as I mentioned, he's very involved with his uh, two young boys. And uh, they're involved in baseball and Boy Scouts. And tonight's a very important uh, playoff game for his team uh, that he coaches that has, I believe, both sons on the team as well. So we want to thank Mr. Nault. I'd like to bring up Lisa Ullman, a Spanish teacher at Wayham High School, 20 years of service. Lisa had the luxury of, uh, with her maiden name, uh, having her mailbox just uh, before mine and now, uh, I'm sorry, but just after mine, and now with her married name, uh, she has the luxury of being uh, just before my mailbox and getting all my mail when people put it in the wrong slots. But more importantly, Lisa is a Spanish teacher. She is the SAD and Code Club advisor, a former department head and lead teacher for the foreign language department, and she's uh, busy with her two sons, 
Uh, we're both involved in hockey and soccer and are here today. So thank you guys for being here and thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Next up is Steve Rumble, 20 years of service. <laughs> Steve is uh, currently Dean of Students and Physical Education teacher at the Wareham High School. He has the oversight of all of the seniors and all of their uh, activities this year, so an exciting year for Steve. He uh, is the site director for athletics in his spare time and also the badminton club advisor, a mentor, the former intern, uh, director of athletics, uh, former volleyball coach, baseball coach, tennis coach, and uh, assistant physical fitness instructor, summer school teacher, and I'm happy to say he's a proud father and son uh, a fa father of a son and daughter who are very successful and are Wareham High School graduates. <laughs> Last but not least is uh, Mr. Henry St. Julian, 20 years of service, Wareham High School. He is currently a teacher and director of the Common Core Academy, which is our after school program. He is also the global education advisor, former history department head, faith club advisor, student council advisor, cross country coach, proud father of a son who is a WHS grad and a freshman at Bridgewater State, and a daughter who is a junior at Wareham High School. Thank you. And next at the high schools, Mr. Scott Palladino. <laughs> Scott has 20 years experience. He's had many different roles in our district and we're very grateful and thrilled to have him with us. Evening. From the uh, middle school, uh, and I know that uh, Marilyn Hackett, who is a secretary for 20 years, wanted to be here. Um, she is double booked tonight. Um, Marilyn is uh, part of the glue that holds the school together in the main office. Uh, she does it with a sense of humor and uh, certainly with a lot of compassion for kids. So I want to congratulate Marilyn for 20 years. Um, Helen Gabriel, who also couldn't be here tonight, is 20 years as a paraprofessional, and I've had the pleasure of watching Helen with uh, kids in all of the programs in the school, and she has um, unlimited patience and compassion for kids, and I want to congratulate Helen for the way she's done the 20 years. Uh, Debbie Peckham, I call her Debbie, her real name is Deborah. Um, we call her Deb at school, um, has been in the district for 20 years. Most of this time has been um, at the middle school. She was hired to begin at Minot Forest. And I just want to read some uh, statistics that we put together that Debbie as a special education uh, secretary has uh, scheduled over 4,000 meetings. Uh, she's completed over 3,000 IEP amendments. Uh, she has made over 8,000 telephone, personal, and email contacts with parents regarding their children, and she didn't try to count how many copies she's made in that position. <laughs> um, but Debbie, once again, is somebody that we cherish, and she's fantastic with kids on top of all of that. Congratulations, Deb. <laughs> principal of the Deacus School and every once in a while you get the opportunity and the privilege and the honor of, a, of announcing people to get these awards. I have the privilege this evening to award the 20 year service to Mr. Patrick Roach. <laughs> Patrick is a grade two teacher at the Deacus Elementary School and Patrick is known as what we call the irreplaceables. He is an excellent teacher. He is a teacher leader in our school. And we are very grateful and honored of the fact that he's sharing his talents with our children and our staff. Thank you, Patrick, for everything. <laughs> our next 20-year award goes to Ms. Karen Rittenauer. She is our school psychologist. And again, I've had the honor and privilege to work with Karen. Karen is a consummate professional. She is there no matter what. She wears many hats in the school. 
and you never hear a word of complaint or anything. She just has a quiet professionalism, and she does everything for children. Thank you, Karen, for everything that you do. Our third member, Mr. Richard Paling, is also have a 20-year certificate. He is not here this evening, but I'd like to acknowledge him and thank him for all of the hard work and dedication he has given to the Wayham Public School District. Good evening, everyone. If I could call up Joyce Patel, please. Joyce is being honored for 30 years in Wareham, but not only that, this is her year of her retirement. So we're very sad to see her go, but she has such a smile on her face right now. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce is a second grade teacher at Minot Forest, and this year she wrote a grant to continue a program that we had done years ago when her husband, Ken, had the Community Service Learning Grant and she was able to purchase books, which we were given to Toby Hospital. So when the babies were born, the mothers received a book from Mrs. Patel's class with a note inside. And as the parents get the book, they mail the postcard back to school. So it was always exciting to see those postcards coming in the mail from Mrs. Patel's class. She also was a member of my faculty council this year, and she received an honor award this year from Plymouth County Education Association. So we're very proud of her for that. I know she'll look forward to sleeping in when retirement really kicks in. Doesn't have to worry about recess duty anymore, going out in those cold, cold days, and wondering, is there school or not today for the snowy day? So congratulations, Joyce. <laughs> Jane Petraka. Jane is being recognized for 20 years of service in the Wayham Public Schools. And Jane began as a reading recovery teacher back in around the 90s or so. From there, she was doing some team teaching in our schools. When I first came to Wareham, I worked with Jane as a third grade teacher, and then she became a first grade teacher, and this was at Hammond. And this year, for the last couple years, Jane has been at the Minot Forest School as first grade. And next year, she'll get to be at the Deca School. So she'll be one of the teachers that travels to multiple schools in her career. Uh, she is also a, an inclusion teacher, so she works with a special education teacher in her classroom, does a wonderful job with the students. She serves in the after school care program doing drama, and that is right up Jane's alley. Um, very outspoken, very bubbly, love her personality. Her daughter's taking after her drama. Um, with a lot of plays that she's been in. And Jane also was a Walmart Teacher of the Year and received a computer one year. So congratulations, Jane. <laughs> Not here this evening is Patricia Panzoni. We call her Trish. Uh, she's been in Wareham for 20 years, and she had said to me, I've been in the same classroom for 20 years. I'm actually looking forward to a change as we move our classrooms and reconfigure our buildings. So uh, congratulations to Trish for her 20 years. <laughs> Judith McLaughlin also is not here this evening. She's one of my kindergarten special education teachers. I began to know Judy when I came to the Hammond School working at special ed. And no matter what, she always has a smile on her face. And I'd like to recognize Judy for her 20 years of, atten of work. And also in our cafeteria, Catherine Baptista. She's worked for 20 years. She works really hard. She's gone back and forth between Minot and Hammond. When Hammond was open and we had to prepare the lunches and we had to cart them over by vehicle and she'd set up the, the trays in the cafeteria and serve lunches there and then she'd have to come back to Minot. She did a wonderful job. I loved when we did the grandparents' Thanksgiving dinner and she'd always be there and she would dress up. So congratulations to Catherine for her 20 years of service. for maybe uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes uh, so that we can talk to all of the uh, 
candidates and congratulate them formally, individually, and uh, partake in, in the goodies. So uh, I'd like to have about a 10 minute recess. Thank you. the committee and uh, again uh, thank everyone for their service uh, to the children of Wayham uh, and their dedication um, it is all about the professional staff and the support staff that make this operation work and uh, I for one am very appreciative and I'm sure I speak for the committee at this particular time I would like to call anyone to the front table uh, for public participation is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the school committee at this time? Seeing no public participation, we'll move on to good news. Madam Superintendent. Thank you. I would like to begin with our happenings video. Uh, when Toby merged 
for the two hospitals uh, in Bedford and Fall River, Shelton and St. Luke's. Uh, they asked me to be a trustee there. They wanted to do that. Uh, I served as a trustee for 16 years. Tried to represent the community as best I know how. Very proud to be from Wayneham. It's, uh, you know, well, at Wayneham High School, we, we have a lot of good friends. I think it was 150, one or two graduates in the high school class, senior class, small, but we got to know each other. Uh, multicultural community. Uh, while you're living that, and you know, you don't appreciate the value uh, that that brings to yourself and others you know, along the way. Very thankful to work in this community. Uh, still have a lot of good friends uh, that we graduated with in high school. Uh, those friends never go away. Uh, there's always good memories, emails, phone calls. And again, we're very honored to be able to highlight our Wareham alums. If you would like to be interviewed and appear on television, please do not hesitate <laughs> in contacting us. We're very proud of our alums. And finally, this, this afternoon I attended the Make Peace Grant Award uh, presentation. We received $9,950 for the STEAM CAD Academy, which will be housed at the middle school, and $1,214 for service learning project also at the middle school. So thank you very much to Make Peace. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you. Um, is, does that wrap up your portion? It does. Does the committee have any good news? I have. You have an announcement, I know. I do have an announcement. <laughs> uh, the Taste of Wareham uh, will be happening this Friday, uh, May 9th. It's to benefit the Foundation for Wareham Education that provides grants to our teachers. Um, it's going to be held at uh, um, 80 Make Peace at the Box Mill Hall, again, May 9th. It's starting at 6 p.m. There are tickets that are still available. Um, you can either buy them at the door or you can email um, R-G-A-K-I-D-I-S at ne-cat.org. Um, I think that that's also available on our website. So it begins at 6 p.m. again at the Box Mill Hall at 80 Makepeace. And please stop by, buy tickets. It's a fundraiser but also a celebration um, of handing out grants to of our deserving teachers and, um, and what they're doing in their classroom. So thanks. It's a great time. It really is. Mm -hmm. It's really enjoyable. It's a great event. Mr. Lazarus, any uh, good news? Okay. Um, Nicole, you've got good news today. She won her match in tennis, so I think that's good news. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sweat? Uh, I actually have some good news, but I'll save it for the uh, Day on the Hill report, if you don't mind. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Flaherty? Um, I, I, I had good news, but every good news that I came up with was covered in the uh, newspapers, but you're doing a great job of, of that. Um, and particularly happy to see the, um, the, high, the high honor roll and the honor roll um, listed there, as well as the dual enrollment. So keep up the good work um, the, the, to the papers that cover the town. Mr. Chair, I had one more. Oh, go Please. ahead. Um, I think it's a good piece of news. Um, last night, the Board of Selectmen uh, voted to put uh, the vote on the ballot uh, for, uh, to allow town meeting voters to vote whether they would like an override in this town. Um, it's going to be Tuesday, June 17th, all day. Um, but again, I just, I think it's a piece of good news that the Board of Selectmen have decided to call a special election that will allow um, all of the members of town to vote on, um, on the override. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I had uh, just a couple of pieces of good news. The first one, obviously, <clears throat> um, Rhonda just spoke to it, is town meeting. And I, I guess I, I'm going to editorialize a little bit. Um, and I've been around for a heck of a long time. And I've gone to a lot of town meetings. I got to honestly say, that this town meeting was the most professional, most well-organized, the most civil 
town meeting that I think I've ever attended. And so I just, I, I just was so happy and pleased with the way it went. Uh, not just because uh, we authorized, uh, we, we got the um, uh, two and a half vote, but just the way things were put together, the way the committees worked together, the way the boards worked together, and coming out with a plan. Uh, and that was, uh, I just, I just, I was just absolutely in awe of how well that meeting went. The other piece of good news that I had was I had the honor and pr privilege of <coughs> attending the art show at the high school, I think it was last Thursday. My goodness gracious, we really, really have some talented young people at that high school uh, in terms of their artistic ability. And I was most impressed with the painter's tape art that was on the wall. They did that in one day. Uh, decorated the halls with painter's tape and it was absolutely amazing. So uh, kudos to the art department, teachers, faculty, uh, and particularly those kids that really, really exhibited true talent uh, at our art show. Okay, Scott. Scott. Okay, we're gonna introduce some top five students and I know we have our students are very involved, and I know uh, their coach told me they just got back from a uh, tennis match away, so we're hoping they're going to be joining us shortly. Uh, but a week ago from today, uh, Superintendent uh, Shaverhood and myself had the opportunity to have uh, lunch and a, at a celebratory event for the South Coast Conference for all of the top five students in all of the schools for the South Coast Conference. And uh, it was a very exciting day for us and for the students. And uh, we're very proud of all of our students, uh, especially tonight we're proud of the top five students from the class of 2014 for Wareham High School. Uh, I know I have two here, and I, again, I have two tennis players that I hope are going to be on their way. I do want to start off mentioning Sydney Andrade, who couldn't be here uh, because of a commitment at work. And uh, I do hope the other two tennis players are here, Coach. <laughs> so we'll get started right away. I'd like to bring up uh, one of our top five students, Emma Wynn, to come up and join me up here, please. And I want to also bring up uh, Joshua Dix to come up and have a seat. And uh, certainly they can talk about uh, anything you want to know about Wareham High School and uh, great ambassadors, as I said, so I'll turn it over to them. These are two of our top five students. Welcome. And if, if I can, uh, Hope Wallace and Charlotte May Erasmia were the two tennis players that uh, are not here currently, but I know they're back at the school. <laughs> no, no, no. We're expecting five, ten minutes speech. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to open it up before we ask you some questions? Um, no. no. <laughs> I, don't really, I don't know what to think of, talk about. Well, maybe I do. Um, I don't. Uh, um, okay. I, I don't know if you would know this, but I have a diagnosis of autism spectrum, and w which, which in many ways makes like education very hard for me in some regards, as well as as well as like speaking, which you can probably tell at the moment. Doing um, very well. It's supposed to be a joke, but okay. I have worked very hard to get this far in well in my high school in my high school career. And uh, and I am proud to be such a high-ranking student. I don't think I would ever be in the top 5. Great job, great job. Yeah. Josh Dix, let's hear it for Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Shalomay was able to just uh, get your ass and get over here right after the match. I appreciate you coming over. I know, I know it was tight. And uh, Emma, we'll turn it over to um, Emma. I'd just like to say that, you know, while I do work very hard in the classroom, that it wouldn't be possible at all without my teachers and my dean, my principal, and every, all my students that help me out. 
Um, every single day they're always there for me to help me out with questions or with schoolwork or you know just little things so I really do appreciate everybody that helped me to, to get to where I am right now so thank you thank you Emma <laughs> shall I speak into the mic <laughs> Um, honestly, I just, when I found out I was in the top five, I was kind of surprised because basically what I, all I do is just work hard. That's pretty much all it is. There's nothing more to it, pretty much. And like, like Emma said, people like, all the people that, that helped me along the way, teachers, um, students, my parents, always being there to support me, it's really helpful. Any questions on the board? for these three outstanding students. Let's start on this side. Mr. Sweat. Well, congratulations on your achievements, for one thing. Uh, in terms of, uh, I'd like to know from all three of you what your aspirations are for the future. Well, I'm planning to become an astrophysics. Well, to major in physics and probably, may, probably astrophysics. It, it may be calculus as well, maybe mathematics as well. I'm planning on going to U.S. Dartmouth, which I've already been accepted to, have, which I've been accepted to and have a Merth scholarship for. And I also got the Abigail Adams scholarship for getting the high score in the MCAS. So yeah, a large part of my college career, a large part of my college funds have been paid for my hard work. Very good. <laughs> Emma? And I'll be attending Wheaton College in the fall. And once I finish there, I'd like to go on to graduate school. And I'd like to hopefully at some point get my PhD. And my goal is to be a college professor. Very so good. I'm going to UMass Dartmouth as well. And I hopefully I'll become, will be going on to med school and become a neuroscientist or a surgeon, whatever one <laughs> I prefer at that moment. Well, I just wanted to tell Josh that uh, you'd be in a very good company in terms of uh, studying physics. Uh, one of our Wayham High School graduates of about, I want to say around 30 years ago, uh, is uh, it's Dr. Tom Carey, and he is one of the head uh, nuclear physicists at Los Alamos in New Mexico, and he's a Wayham High School graduate. <laughs> it, it might be worthwhile to, to mention what they do at Los Alamos. <laughs> Well, I just know they do research for the government. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> yeah, nu nuclear research. Um, I, I, actually, Mr. Sweat took my question. I was curious what your aspirations were, but I'll ask a, a bit of a loaded question, and if you don't want to answer it, that's fine. But what do you think it is about you folks at the top five that sets you apart from the rest? Um, I'd just like to say that I think a lot of, you know, the top five people are very good at balancing a lot of different commitments. I know a lot of us have jobs, we play sports, we do clubs and activities, and have a family and a social life at some point. <laughs> um, so I think a lot of um, being a good student is not just in the classroom, it's a lot of balancing and time management outside of the classroom, I think helps you get to where you can be. Thank very you. good. My question's pretty simple. If you were to meet um, a young man or a young woman that just moved into Wareham um, that was in grade eight, what would you advise them about Wareham High School? I would advise them that they have a lot of opportunities. The teachers are very dedicated to, to make sure you succeed. Also want, I also consider them to greatly consider what they're planning on doing for their lives. And also to understand that what they choose is not necessarily set in stone, even if, even if they do go to college on it. Thank you. And, and that no matter the disabilities, they can certainly succeed. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, and just also that, like, um, you need to be able to be able to take your own opportunities, where if you present all these opportunities, they're only as good as, you know, what you do with them. So to, you know, join clubs, do sports, talk to different people, and really, um, you know, take charge of your education, I guess. And you felt that you've had that opportunity at Wareham High? Definitely, definitely. Good. Very good. Mrs. Bugin? Mrs. Bugin? Yeah, okay. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, thank you. 
Yeah. Beauty before brains. No. Uh, Whoa. Oh. 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 <laughs> that was Beauty and brains. <laughs> this meeting just got a lot more. I'm sorry. <laughs> extremely, extremely um, proud of all of you and what you've accomplished. And um, I think the one question that I had is if you had your um, opportunity to invest in the schools in Wareham, what would you invest in? Um, I would personally invest in trying to like update its technology and try to try to update, try to make sure the science is up to date. Because frankly, the, those are very two very important things, and also not a lot of people do them. Well, because well, you know, it's science and math, but you know, <laughs> science. Thank you. People should really try and work to do, do, do what you like. You should definitely follow what you like, but you should also follow what would be reasonable for your environment. That's, that's pretty important. I would probably invest in like extracurricular, extracurricular activities because I think it's really important. I think it kind of overshadows because we're like so academic. But like, I think people don't really see how important those are, and they're really important in being like an all-around student. Do you have specifics around that? Like, what kind of extracurricular? Are we talking sports? Are we talking arts? Are we talking um, more clubs? I think I think a little bit of everything. Okay, great. Thank you. I would definitely agree with what Charlamagne said. Like, um, maybe more club funding so that clubs can have more opportunities to, you know, go on field trips and do lots of out of the classroom learning would definitely be helpful. Because especially co colleges nowadays are looking more, you know, not just the academics, but the person as a whole. So I think that would help. Right. Well, again, I just want to thank you all for getting everything you possibly can out of the school system and doing so well. And also thank what I'm sure that you have an amazing support system around you, your parents, your friends, your family members, because again, they should be congratulated also for um, really helping you succeed. So thank you. Thank you. Rhonda, I'm sorry. That came out all wrong. <laughs> I'm okay. really, I meant to say brains and age, but it just came out wrong. I'm really sorry. That's awful. I'm just, I feel terrible. <laughs> The yeah, meeting is, it still has a I can get I you know. back. The Thanks. meeting is going very, very long tonight. I just feel so terrible. I Please just, forgive gets, me. Trust right. me, the getting even part, she's going to enjoy a lot. Uh, I am. <laughs> Yes, um, and Mr. Lazarus. Do I need a flak jacket? No. <laughs> no, that was awful. Go ahead. Well, I don't really have questions. I do want to congratulate all three of you for your accomplishments. You are a credit to the school, to the community. Uh, I do have one comment, Mr. Rasmi. I appreciate everything you've done in the roofing business <laughs> in that you have made excellent presentations more than once on two different roofing situations at the high school. And it is certainly a credit to you that you're willing to get up in front of a bunch of cranky old people and do a presentation that was not particularly easy. But to all of you, congratulations. Good luck at college next year. And thank you for all you've done for the school and the community. And again, thank you for being such good ambassadors for Wayne Public Schools. And I would like to have everybody stand up and give them a standing O. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Nicole, we haven't heard from you. I would just like to congratulate the three of you on your success and say that you are the people that I look up to when I grow throughout my day and where I'm in my school, the people I try to be like. So great job. Thank you. <laughs> Moving along. And come back. Um, <laughs> at this particular time, I would like to uh, have the minutes of April 9th. Uh, do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion to accept the minutes of April 9th. Do I have a second? Second. There is a second. Are there any additions, deletions, questions? Being none, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
five zero zero. Um, the next order of business is a request from the junior class uh, for a prom 2015. I know he's no stranger to school committee meetings, so I'm going to just bring up uh, G. Allen Perry, who's going to do the presentation with the uh, junior class advisor, Ms. Christine Kuntz, and I'm going to step aside. Welcome. Uh, hello, school committee. I would first like to thank you for fitting us into your busy schedule. Speak right schedule. into the mic if you could. Oh, so I'm terribly sorry. I'll speak <laughs> close. Is this good enough? Good? Yes. yes. Fabulous. So first, I would like to thank you for fitting us into your schedule. I know you're awfully busy. Ms. Coons and myself would like to personally thank you as well as the rest of our class. So today, I'm not here about uniforms, I'm here about prom, because I'm prom <laughs> committee president. Yes, it's just as fabulous. So to start off, I would like to ask your permission to allow us to have a prom. So I will give you a little information about our prom, and then you can ask me all the millions of questions you'd like to. Mm -hmm. So we would like to have our prom at the club at New Seabury. It is located in Mashby, Massachusetts. It is 26 miles from Wareham and takes 33 minutes without traffic to get there. This is funny to you. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and you know why it's funny. But yes, it is funny. But go ahead. I'm enjoying this. Excuse go me. I'm sorry. Here. I don't mean to make this funny. This is serious. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so this is in Mashby. It's a beautiful country club. It's on a golf course. We have beautiful ocean views in the background. The prom. Um, committee has been working at extreme amounts to finally pick a place and we finally found this lovely place that is very funny if anyone knows so can I get, why don't you ask me questions <laughs> <laughs> does anyone have anything go ahead mr. Lazarus when is it when is the date the date is this does not have the date May 7th of 2015 if that's a Saturday. No, that's, that's a Saturday. May. <laughs> no, the date of the prom. What yeah. is that? I don't think I printed that sheet for you. Oh, uh, I was. I think it's the seventh. I Anybody think it's looking the seventh. So yeah, from today. It's probably the seventh. The oh, ninth. Yes, the ninth. I'm terribly I'm sorry. Confused. Is this for the senior prom for next year? This is the senior oh, prom. Oh, all right, next okay. Year. I thought it was for a junior prom for this year. That's I'm why I was sorry. going to question the <laughs> date. <laughs> Very good. Okay, any other questions? Mrs. Vukin? So um, I've been to Newsbury a couple times um, doing events there. So I just want to know are you having it at Pompanesset? Are you having it in the main um new seabury country we're Club we're going area? to be having it in the main ballroom of the seabury the restaurant is attached to it yeah we will be renting out the ballroom is that the long one that is the long one it is spectacular yeah. mm -hmm. it's gorgeous so nice nice choice on the location thank you if you guys need help on pricing let me know because i know the person out there so i actually got a great deal. got a Yay. fabulous deal All right, any good. other questions Mr. Flaherty? No, it sounds like okay. uh, Mr. Mr. Ms. Vugan's uh, seal of approval <laughs> sells it for me. That's, that's gorgeous. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion to approve the prom. So moved. So, do I hear a second? Second. I, second. I had a motion for Mr. Lazarus and so a second. Moved. Yeah. And a second from uh, Mrs. Vugan. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Five zero zero. Have a great time. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Athletic report with the sports, Mr. Rodericks. Okay. Um, winter season uh, was was very successful. Um, in terms of participation, wins, our teams were very competitive. I think it went very, very smooth. Our uh, most successful team was the boys basketball team. They, uh, they won the league championship, I believe, for the seventh or eighth straight year. And they weren't, weren't as talented as they have been in the past. I thought the coaching staff did a great job. And I thought the kids did a fantastic job of playing as a team. And, and 
went above their expectations, I believe. This wasn't a team that probably shouldn't have won a, a league championship, but, but they did. Uh, girls basketball team had uh, participation increase from 17 to 26 because uh, of the eighth grade students, which was a, a big plus. Um, they also had a great season. They qualified for the state tournament. They had a girl, Amber Filkins, who scored a thousandth point in dramatic fashion uh, in a big game at the end of the game uh, to tie the game up. It was, it was uh, very exciting. She also was a Dave Cowens Award winner, which was the first time in the school history that we had one. Uh, I was a little surprised at that. And that's basically for the best all-around girl basketball player combined with grades. Uh, and um, it was a great award for, for the school. Um, boys ice hockey probably made the greatest improvement in, in one season. They went from zero wins to nine. Um, they came within one point of qualifying for the tournament. Their participants went up from 13 to 20. Uh, Boston Herald did a great, great article on them because of all the improvements they've made. And uh, the coach did a fantastic job with the team. Very, 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 very happy with the team. <coughs> Girls ice hockey, although it's not based out of Wareham, had uh, five Wareham uh, participants. And uh, they also did very well, coming within one point of qualifying for the tournament. Girls track keeps rising and rising. Uh, they had a winning record, and it's parlayed into the spring. They're doing well again. Uh, the participation keeps going up. The times keep getting better, and uh, I see the sky's the limit for the girls' track team. I think they're going to be a real force in the next few years. Uh, boys' track team struggled, but we had a brand new coach who I'm very pleased with, and I think he's going to make a big difference in the in the boys' track program. Um, the only negative thing would have been wrestling. We had two two wrestlers. We combined that with Carver, and the two were seniors, and uh, it doesn't seem to be that much of an interest, and that's. One of, the, well, one of the things that probably I'm going to, we are going to do away with for next year. It just didn't make much sense for us to carry on with that. But in all in all, I was very happy with the uh, winter season. And is there any, any questions or anything? I, I know Ed's done a great job with Michael and uh, his secretary, uh, Brenda, in regards to the spreadsheet, certainly I know uh, the, the committee has asked for it to be broken down in this way, and I know Ed would be glad to answer any questions you may have rather than go through line item by line item in regards to the cost uh, for participation in the various winter sports. Cliff, I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Of the kids, especially the ones that are listed on here that are going to awards, are any of them going on to play college sports? Yeah, um, I know in the girls' basketball team, Amber Filkins is going on. Uh, Brianna Muir is going on. Uh, several of the girls' track program girls are going on. Uh, boys' basketball, I'm, I'm not sure if they're going to They're going to go on, but I'm not sure if they're going to play college basketball. Um, ice hockey, we didn't have many seniors. We had one. Um, uh, that's about it, I believe. Okay. Some yeah. of the. Go ahead. Okay. Some of the GPAs on here. Um, concerns. Well, I mean, um, I think what's going to help this year is uh, the coaches are going to have access to that power school for their teams, and I think that's going to be a big lift as far as being able to monitor their teams on a regular basis. Uh, we did not have uh, we didn't have anybody ineligible during the season. The grades come out in January, and midway through the season, and they were all eligible throughout the season. Um, I would like to maybe make it. You know, I've talked to Scott a little bit about this. Uh, the criteria, even though our criteria is greater than the MIA criteria, I would like to even see if we could step it up one more, and uh, that might help too. Um, you know, I, I it's I think this new. Power school thing is really going to help the coaches monitor their players a lot, a lot, a lot easier. They'll have access to their grades on a regular basis, and I would encourage them once this is out there that you know things aren't going well, that go for extra help, come late to practice. All those things will be encouraged, which they are now. But I think it's not as easy to monitor as it will be in the future. No, I. Oh, go ahead. No, and, and uh, we're piloting it in the spring right now. So the spring track co uh, coaches the. Two tennis coaches, uh, softball, uh, they, all, they all have access to power school. So we're kind of doing a pilot in the spring, and then all three sports uh, seasons will have it next year. So it's a, it's, for us, it's going to be interesting to see after we get a few years under our belt, you know, what, what difference have we seen on the average GPA for 
the fall, uh, the winter, the spring, and just compare a few years because I think Ed is correct. Uh, having coaches that can really uh, hold the students accountable and, and not rely on how you doing, I'm doing great, and, and you know everything's fine, and off we go. Uh, there's going to be much more account accountability at this point in time, and uh, we're excited to get a full year under our belt with the coaches having access to power school because even though we have teachers coaching, if they didn't have the student in class, they don't have access to that. So now everyone has full access coach that's in the building and a coach that's out of the building. I think that that's an exceptional, exceptional decision that was made to do that. And I, but the, what's the expectation um, of, the, of the coaches? Uh, do you well, have, are you setting a directive that, that no. not only monitor, but then intervene and or even talk to, you know, collaborate with the teachers if they see a problem? Well, that's my goal. Uh, that's what, you know, I was used to, to be honest with you. Uh, I was used to doing things like that. And I want to make sure that that becomes a fixture here in the future. And uh, it will start that next fall when we have our coaches meeting. That's one of the things I'm going to stress, that they should know their players. They should know their grades. They should know how well they're doing or not well they're doing. And, you know, they may get a D, but it, it shouldn't be because of lack of going back for extra help, uh, you know, getting everything done on time and doing the right things. And that's what we hope to accomplish. I, I do see the overall GPA was decent. There were some teams that were below that, mm -hmm. you know, no question. But um, that would be our goal in the future, to have that so that the coaches do monitor their students and that they, they make sure that they're doing everything the right way. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Anyone else from the committee have any comment? <clears throat> Mr. Swat? Uh, first of all, I, this this report keeps getting refined and keeps getting better, so I thank Michael and yourself for the, the work that you've done to uh, meet the committee's needs with respect to the report. I, I share Rhonda's concerns. Uh, one of the teams had large participation, 30, 35 uh, people involved, and a, uh, a 74 average GPA. That's just, given the fact that that's the average, I can imagine what some of the lower GPAs for the individual students must have been so it's 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 a disturbing number to me and I applaud your your initiative to perhaps raise the bar because that's that's just too low um, well it is too low I mean you can fail too and still be eligible so you know it's not nice to say but some kids will just reach that you know reach the minimum just to make it I like to be I like it to be increased too one failure tops, and that, you know, that would show at least hopefully everything is going the right way. Um, but you know, like I said, I am going to try to enforce that on a, on a greater level next year with all the coaches from day one that they monitor their kids so that there's no you know, surprises. And hopefully we can get more kids not just going on to college, but going on to college and playing sports. That would, that would be a big thing. I, I do like, you know, I should say this publicly, I want to thank Mike and uh, Brenda Process, my secretary, they did a fabulous job with, with getting this all together for me. And we, we all did it together, but without their help, this would not be done the way it is. The final comment, I mean, it is what it is, but the, the fact that rink time represented 20% of the total per student deficit is a staggering number. It's just a staggering number. And I wondered if there was anything, if you have any specific thoughts about that number, because it just seems like a disproportional amount to be contributing to, to one sport for one specific reason. And this year, um, the coach did a great job of cutting it down. Uh, he cut down on his time. Yes, yes, he did. He did a great job of that, and he was very conscious of it. It is what it is. Uh, the ice time is $275 an hour any way you slice it. And uh, he did a great job of cutting that, that price down, and not cutting the price down, but cutting the time down. We've also gonna, we're also increasing, uh, increasing the user fees to $250. That should save some money. I mean, it's not going to cover that whole thing, obviously, but it will, will, it will be a, better, a stronger, stronger amount will definitely help us. We could increase it even more than that. I've talked to uh, many of the hockey parents, no, I'd say about five or six of the parents, and they have no, no problems paying the extra money. Uh, maybe in the future we could even go up. I didn't want to go up too much. I mean, I thought there was a sizable amount we went up. Um, and 
you know, hockey programs everywhere face the same problems. I just think that our hockey coach and our hockey team this year just deserves to keep going just based on how hard they worked, how hard they improved, and I think everything is getting better and better with them. And, and the, the only way to cut down on the ice time is to cut the hours down, and I don't know if we can cut down much more than that. Well, we can build our own rank. There you go. And, and just a reminder uh, <laughs> for folks that we are in a cooperative uh, hockey program with Carver, and they do pay some yeah. of that ice time as well. But, but I was under the impression from what I read that what we were looking at were, were just Wareham expenses. Yeah. Well, I, I, I also have it included in there. Um, we, are, we will be getting a check from Carver, which is not in there. Um, I haven't received it yet, but that's for the, for the, I talked to the athletic director maybe two or three weeks ago, and we will be getting a check from them that covers some expenses, uh, but not, not the ice time. Thank you. Anyone else on the committee? Uh, yeah. Mr. Flaherty? I, um, I'm sorry, I, I might have missed it. Who's, whose initiative was it to use the power school for the coaches? Sitting right next to him. <laughs> I was going to commend someone there, but I'm going to commend Mr. Sweat. No, I Thank take you. my comment back. <laughs> Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sweat. Uh, it's one of those things that I kind of expected was already happening, and I was surprised to learn that it wasn't. So, I'm Well, it was of, happening with, no, it was, the teachers have access to power school, but not if they have them in class. If they have them in class, but not, not the whole they, team. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So they, they had to rely on, you know, getting maybe a progress report or. Like uh, Scott said, uh, yeah, I'm doing well, coach. Yeah, you know how that goes. Well, that's what I was going to ask. How, how, is it, how is it done now? It's just So, so we would, we would um, most of the coaches, and I think I could speak for most of them, would tell the students, don't show up to practice. And I know Mr. Sweat had to do this in the past without printing out your power school. Quick look up, we call it. And it shows the grades, attendance uh, for all the terms. So that's how it was done in the past. It's kind of old school, really, if you think about it. Uh, now, uh, I'll speak for Coach Sweat. He can go home after this meeting and log into power school and see how, I know Charlamay was up there a few minutes ago, see how she's progressing in term four of her senior year. Um, you know, he can, he can now do that uh, throughout the season. And, um, and it's just for the active players on his tennis team. All right. And um, I think you brought it up twice about the MII requirement on, you know, passing classes. And can you just, uh, either you, Mr. Palladino or, or Mr. Rodriguez, uh, just, explain where we are and so the MIA requirement is you have to pass four classes okay our requirement is you have to pass six we had four uh, up until about uh, two years ago and we increased it to six um, which for some students means um, they if they fail two they're off the team so you, you but you're allowed to fail at least one class and still play correct or, or can you fail two classes two depending on the well, grade yeah so you, but you can hypothetically fail two classes yeah. and still play a sport. Right, and we're and, in, investigating and, that. And Mr. Rodriguez, I think you were saying that you're in support of reducing that. Yes, I'd like to go to just one. So, so I, I guess, guess that'd be our goal. And whether you take seven classes or eight, you're allowed to fail one class. Yeah. I, I guess what I'm saying is, is what do you need from us? I mean, do you need us to put it on the agenda and put it to a vote? I think you, I mean, I support that. Well, I have supported it. We'll, well, we we'll, just get, we'll, we'll just be just, back in front yeah. of you at some point in time. We've got a little more homework to do on that so we can do a, a detailed presentation um, but we'll, we'll certainly uh, be in front of you at some point in time we also want to make sure uh, we give the students as much advance notice as possible so I would anticipate in the future we'll be in front of you working on that we also have to really take a look at the schedule and make sure we have enough classes that we can hold these kids accountable for uh, with everything that's going on in the district okay well Mr. Lazarus I have a question concerning the power school situation, and please, I hope no coach present takes this the wrong way. I'm assuming that the access that coaches will have is not administrative access, that they'll have it just for this place. Correct. It's the lowest level of access, and I know you're very familiar with power school, Mr. Lazarus. It's the lowest access that any uh, staff member could have. So it's basically quick look up, attendance, and maybe demographics, and that's pretty much it. Thank you. Well, I want to beat the same old horse again. And um, I've got some concerns, uh, but I, first of all, I want to congratulate the teams and the coaches because um, I do think the winter season was very successful. And I'm really happy to see the success of the hockey team, even because I'm not a big hockey fan, but I have to appreciate their accomplishments. 
I'm not a big hockey fan either, honestly. Uh, but, but I have to appreciate their accomplishments. But I, I appreciate right. how hard they improved and how hard they worked. I mean, I think the, right. they did a fabulous job. So with that being said, Go Bruins. I have to just give you some of my thoughts. And you can take them or leave them. It really doesn't matter. Um, but I, I think that we, we really have to... Con at some point in time, convene a committee to go to just completely revamp our athletic handbook. Rules and protocols that we really got to take a look at it. And, you know, when that happens, it's entirely up to you guys. But I really think that we should take a good, hard look at it. And when we do look at it, uh, we should focus in on a couple of things. One, obviously, is academic high expectations. You know, um, let me just give you when I was principal, way back when. And we didn't do bad, but they had to pass all their classes. Yeah, I agree. And if they did fail a class, if they did fail one class, they could work out a contract. And, and keeps getting better, so I thank Michael and yourself for the, the work that you've done to uh, meet the committee's needs with respect to the report. I, I share Rhonda's concerns. Uh, one of the teams had large participation, 30, 35, uh, people involved and a, uh, a 74 average GPA that's just given the fact that that's the average I can imagine what some of the lower GPAs for the individual students must have been so it's 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 a disturbing number to me and I applaud your your initiative to perhaps raise the bar because that's that's just too low um, well it is too low I mean you can fail too and still be eligible so, you know, it's not nice to say, but some kids will just reach that, you know, reach the minimum just to make it. I like it to be, I like it to be increased to one failure tops, and that, you know, that would show at least hopefully everything is going the right way. Um, but you know, like I said, I am going to try to enforce that on a on a greater level next year with all the coaches from day one that they monitor their kids so that there's no, you know, surprises, and hopefully we can get more kids. Not just going on to college, but going on to college and playing sports. That would, that would be a big thing. And I, I do like, you know, I should say this publicly, I want to thank Mike and you know, Brenda Process, my secretary. They did a fabulous job with, with getting this all together for me. And we, we all did it together, but without their help, this would not be done the way it is. The final comment, I mean, it is what it is, but the, the fact that rink time, represented 20% of the total per student deficit is a staggering number. It's just a staggering number. And I wondered if there was anything, if you have any specific thoughts about that number, because it just seems like a disproportional amount to be contributing to, to one sport for one specific reason. And this year, um the coach did a great job of cutting it down. Uh, he cut down on his time. Yes, yes, he did. He did a great job of that, and he was very conscious of it. It is what it is. Uh, the ice time is $275 an hour any way you slice it. And uh, he did a great job of cutting that, that price down. And not cutting the price down, but cutting the time down. We've also gonna, we're also increase, uh, increasing the user fees to $250. That should save some money. I mean, it's not going to cover that whole thing, obviously. But it will, will, it will be a better, a stronger, stronger amount will definitely help us. We could increase it even more than that. I've talked to uh, many of the hockey parents, uh, I'd say about five or six of the parents, and they have no, no problems paying the extra money. Uh, maybe in the future we could even go up. I didn't want to go up too much. I mean, I thought there was a sizable amount we went up. Um, and the hockey programs everywhere face the same problems. I just think that our hockey coach and our hockey team this year just deserves to keep going just based on how hard they worked, how hard they improved, and I think everything is getting better and better with them. And, and the, the only way to cut down on the ice time is to cut the hours down, and I don't know if we can cut down much more than that. Well, we can build our own rank. There you go. And, and just a reminder uh, <laughs> for folks that we are in a cooperative uh, hockey program with Carver, and they do pay some yeah. of that ice time as well. But, but I was under the impression from what I read that what we were looking at were, were just Wareham expenses. Yeah. 
Well, I, I, I also have it included in there. Um, we, are, we will be getting a check from Carver, which is not in there. Um, I haven't received it yet, but that's for the, for the, I talked to the athletic director maybe two or three weeks ago, and we will be getting a check from them that covers some expenses, uh, but not, not the ice time. Thank you. Anyone else on the committee? Uh, yeah. Right. Um, I'm sorry, I, I might have missed it. Who's, whose initiative was it to use the power school for the coaches? You're sitting right next to him. <laughs> I was going to commend someone there, but I'm going to commend Mr. Sweat. No, I Thank take you. my comment back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sweat. Uh, it's one of those things that I kind of expected was already happening, and I was surprised to learn that it wasn't. So, I'm Well, what's happening with, no, what, the teachers have access to power school, but not if they have them in class. If they have them in class, but not. Not the when whole they, team. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So they, they had to rely on, you know, getting maybe a progress report or, like uh, Scott said, uh, yeah, I'm doing well, coach. Yeah, you know how that goes. Well, that's a, I was going to ask, how, how, is it, how is it done now? It's just So, the, the, so we would, we would um, most of the coaches, and I think I could speak for most of them, would tell the students, don't show up to practice. And I know Mr. Sweat had to do this in the past without printing out your power school. Quick look up, we call it. And it shows the grades, attendance uh, for all the terms. So... That's how it was done in the past. It's kind of old school, really, if you think about it. Uh, now, uh, I'll speak for Coach Sweat. He can go home after this meeting and log into power school and see how, I know Charlotte May was up there a few minutes ago, see how she's progressing in term four of her senior year. Um, you know, he can, he can now do that uh, throughout the season. And, um, and it's just for the active players on his tennis team. All right. And um, I think you brought it up twice about the MII requirement on, you know, passing classes and can you just, uh, either you, Mr. Palladino or, or Mr. Rodriguez, uh, just explain where we are? And so the MIA requirement is you have to pass four classes, okay? Our requirement is you have to pass six. We had four uh, up until about uh, two years ago, and we increased it to six, um, which for some students means um, they, if they fail two, they're off the team. So you, you, but you're allowed to fail at least one class and still play? Correct. Or, or can you two, fail two classes? Two, depending on the well, grade. Yeah. So you, but you can hypothetically fail two classes yeah. and still play a sport. Right, and we're and, in, and, investigating that. And Mr. Rodriguez, I think you were saying that you're in support of reducing that. Yes. I'd like to go to just one. So, so I guess that'd be our goal. And well, if you take seven classes or eight, you're allowed to fail one class. Yeah. I, I guess what I'm saying is, is what do you need from us? I mean, do you need us to put it on the agenda and put it to a vote? I think you, I mean, I support that. Well, I have supported it. We'll, well, we we'll, just, we'll, we'll, we'll just, be back in front yeah. of you at some point in time. We've got a little more homework to do on that so we can do a, a detailed presentation. Um, but we'll, we'll certainly uh, be in front of you at some point in time. We also want to make sure uh, we give the students as much advance notice as possible. So I would anticipate in the future we'll be in front of you working on that. We also have to really take a look at the schedule and make sure we have enough classes that we can hold these kids accountable for uh, with everything that's going on in the district. Okay. Well, Mr. Lazarus? I have a question concerning the power school situation, and please, I hope no coach present takes this the wrong way. I'm assuming that the access that coaches will have is not administrative access, that they'll have it just for this place. Correct. It's the lowest level of access, and I know you're very familiar with power school, Mr. Lazarus. It's the lowest access that any uh, staff member could have. So it's basically quick look up, attendance, and maybe demographics, and that's pretty much it. Thank you. Well, I want to beat the same old horse again. And um, I've got some concerns, uh, but I, first of all, I want to congratulate the teams and the coaches because um, I do think the winter season was very successful. And I'm really happy to see the success of the hockey team, even because I'm not a big hockey fan, but I have to appreciate their accomplishments. I'm not a big hockey fan either, honestly. Uh, but, but I have to appreciate their accomplishments. But I, I appreciate right. how hard they improved and how hard they worked. I mean, I think the, right. they did a fabulous job. So with that being said, Go Bruins. I have to just give you some of my thoughts. And you can take them or leave them. It really doesn't matter. Um, but I, I think that we, we really have to... Con at some point in time, convene a committee to, go, to just completely revamp our athletic handbook. Rules and protocols that we really got to take a look at it. And, you know, when that happens, it's entirely up to you guys. But I really think that we should take a good, hard look at it. And when we do look at it, 
uh, we should focus in on a couple of things. One, obviously, is academic high expectations. You know, um, let me just give you when I was principal, way back when. <laughs> and we didn't do bad, but they had to pass all their classes. Yeah, I agree. And if they did fail a class, if they did fail one class, they could work out a contract and they would be allowed to play on a probationary basis. And that contract would be a short-term contract. Um, so there was, there was an out if they had an algebra class that they just couldn't deal with or a, a calculus class that they couldn't deal with. So they, they could be put on a contract. But they had to pass all their classes. And you know what? We didn't really have a problem with it. Um, so high expectations, I think, is something that should be written right into the handbook. Again, mandatory parent pre-meetings. I think that that is absolutely necessary to get the parents involved and to deliver the message to the parents that we do have high academic expectations for our athletes. So I, I think that um, these things could be done. They could be done uh, in terms of a, a multifaceted handbook review of students, parents, teachers, whatever. And I don't think it would take a whole lot of time to really shape um, the basic philosophy of uh, this, um, our athletic program and the role of the student athlete. Um, the other thing is um, this hockey situation. Now this is really crazy and this is really far out and this is uh, about as, as nuts as you can get, but why can't we build a rink? <laughs> And I'm dead serious. I, I, why I, can, can't I, can we, I can probably speak to this. Um, why can't we build a rink? If you why, have $4 not million dollars to invest. But why can't we get a bunch of investors, given the amount of money that I see going down a Gallo, why we couldn't convince a bunch of investors to build a rink? I, I think the, the issue is, and, and there's a, a rink in Raynham that recently ran out, went out of business, uh, you have to have a tremendous amount of capital uh, to front that because uh, uh, you're talking four to six million dollars just for the infrastructure, let alone the land. And uh, I'm pretty familiar with rinks. And, yeah, but we uh, have recreation land. Correct. And then, like you said, you need the investors that are going to front it and not take a loan out like the folks in Raymond well, did. Anyways, I, I, we've got all this CBC money. Let's build a rink. <laughs> I know it's crazy, <coughs> but... You'll probably get an email from our hockey coach tomorrow. You know, <laughs> so anyways. But those are my ideas. Take them for what they're worth. But I really do think a multifaceted, yeah. uh, with all the stakeholders representative, handbook review should be something that we should do. You, Ed and I have had that conversation. I know it's uh, one of his goals moving forward. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Sweat. One more quick question. Uh, I noticed 140 students participated in winter sports. To me, that's a very impressive number. 140 out of, that's essentially 25% of the total student body. I, I, Ed, I know you've got broader experience than just Wareham. Is, should we be as proud of that as, as I am? Is that a higher percentage than a normal high school? Well, I think it's a great percentage considering the size of our school. Um, I think it's getting better. I can see that. I can see more kids are being interested. And I think uh, our coaches are doing a pretty good job of trying to get more kids to participate. And I think that's, that's a pretty good number. And, um, and hopefully it'll keep getting better and better. That's like we had to have two buses for the track team. I was, you know, it's an extra bus, but it means that at least we're getting more and more kids participating. And I was pretty happy with that. And, and hopefully it keeps growing. The eighth graders have really made a difference. Um, we are going to get a waiver in every sport for the fall next year. Excellent. Um, and um, I just put it in. I'll, I'll, there's a meeting in May. I'm sure we'll be approved of it. The only two sports that won't will be uh, boys basketball and um, girls tennis. Girls, girls tennis. tennis. <laughs> and if you, if, if you want girls tennis, we'll go for it. But uh, we're trying to – and I think it's going to help with our enrollment. I think a lot of the eighth graders are heading our way because of this. And um, – and I think some of our teams are really benefiting from, not, not yet, I say in two or three years down the road, I do see our teams improving because of this safe graders. And um, I've been very, very happy. I think the amount is good. And I, I just think, I just think we gotta change the culture sometimes in some of our sports with the winning attitude. And, 
and you know, I, this is my first year, and I'm trying to get my pulse on things and see what we can do to do get that better. Um, you know, I, I I hate losing. Period, and 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 it's and I'm trying to get if we can get our our teams competitive. That's our goal, and get more of our kids into college. And the last thing I want to we talked about. I know the team you talk about the GPA on that team. If you looked at the freshman GPA versus the rest, uh, the juniors and seniors aren't bad. Aren't bad. Much higher. I think the freshman GPA was not very strong, and I think that hurt quite a bit. Just a just a quick comment, because I'm because I have the privilege of being a coach, I can tell you that the balancing act these kids do yeah. to, to do a varsity sport or a JV sport and all the AP classes and all their extracurricular activities, student government, you name it. Work. So and work, them. yes. It's, it's just an extraordinary thing that they do and they come out with a a real benefit in terms of personal discipline, and I think it's a, it's a huge plus for them to do it. But they, let me tell you, they work hard to do it. Yes, they do. Yes, I've been very, that's one thing I'm uh, very, very impressed with, the uh, attitude of a lot of the kids. Uh, they, they do work very hard, and uh, they are committed to their sport. One more quick question. It just did. It made me think of it because uh, you were talking about the eighth graders. What kind of feeder system do you think that we have here in Wareham? I mean, I have a, I have a seven-year-old, and I do have to say that we struggle yeah. with trying to find Wareham sports or teams that then can start building up the skill set that he needs to then go through elementary school, playing sports, middle school, that then is that true feeder system into the, high, into the varsity sports. Yeah, it is. Some of our coaches actually... Our boys soccer coach is really into the soccer scene now with the younger kids. Um, you know, some of our coaches do that, and that's what I'm trying to get. If we can, you know, on the lower level, or the little leagues, so to speak, we're trying to. Our baseball coach has a, an inroads with that, president. and we're hoping that he's the president of the league. We're hoping that we get more coaches that are going to go down there to help out with that situation too, and to highlight it more. I mean, I didn't know much about Wayne before I got here. As far as that that goes, I would. I was assuming that they had strong little leagues and all the ways up, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm trying. I'm finding out that it's not it's not as bad. I think the gap comes between maybe 12 years old and 14 years old, and that gap uh, is when we lose a lot of kids. I think up to that age, it's pretty good, and I'm not sure what goes on with the Babe Ruth League, with the uh, CYO basketball, whatever it may be. But that's the group I think that that, that loses a lot. Yeah, we don't I have eighth grade sports, but. Honestly, I don't, I don't want to have middle school sports again because I think the eighth graders are going to help the high school, and it's going to help the high school enrollment, I believe, by not having middle school sports. If we had middle school sports, I couldn't have these eighth graders, and it would really hurt our sports a great deal, and I think it would hurt some of those kids that might not, well, maybe I'll go to Upper Cape, I'm not going to go to Wayham. But now by being on our teams, they want to come to Wayham. That's where I think we lose some kids. And that two-year span there, maybe seventh grade, sixth yeah. grade. And I know that you have a lot on your plate, but I think it would just, it would be a great service if kind of the, the leader of sports programs in this community, which is the high school and the varsity sports, and that's what we hear all about, if we're kind of doing a reach out to, you know, those, those kind of feeder or quote-unquote well, feeder teams as well as, I think that the only place that we really see is, um, is locally, the YMCA. If not, our kids are even going out of town, yeah. going to ORR oh, yeah. and things like that to do some of their programs. But being able to, sorry, just being able to even partner with the YMCA and what they're trying to do, and sh I think that you would get more kids involved there too. Well, I, I think what happens is the kids that are really into their sports, uh, whatever, whatever sport it may be, they travel, and that's the nature of it. I'm, I'm from New Bedford, from a city, and our kids would play in New Bedford, but they played on a greater level than that, our, our better players. And they just didn't play, they played, with, they mixed with kids from Brockton, Winton, whatever, and, and so on. That's how they got better. My own children, we came, I live in a cushion, and we had them play outside of that so that they could get better. Town leagues are okay, but if they, if you really want to get them better, they have to go above the town leagues anywhere, not just Wareham. And, and, and that's what I like our coaches to get involved with. Yeah. What I'm trying to do in the winter, we had uh, our basketball games, we had some younger teams come to the games. I'd like to see if we could get some younger teams to come to our soccer games, even though they don't have to pay or whatever, 
uh, football games they have to pay, stuff like that. So then they become more familiar with Wareham High School at a younger age. Okay. And if we could get some of our athletes to go down as far as, like, and one of the community services I would like maybe is for them to go down to a little league one day, a couple of days maybe and help out with some practices or whatever's needed so that they could see our players and maybe encourage them a little bit, you know. Yeah. And, and the other thing I've been tr trying to go is, is, is I'd like to see if we get local camps here. Um, and it's not that easy because the expense of these camps is not is, is, is high. And I'm trying to, I'd like to keep the expense down so we could get Wareham kids to go to the camps. We have some coaches that are interested, but when we look at the, the numbers, I, I don't know if it's feasible to, to run a camp. Just keep trying. You know? So. Just keep trying. Well, thank yeah. you. I'd like, to, I'd like to wrap it up, uh, and I want to thank you uh, very, very much. This is your first year, but I think, th I, think I speak for the board. I know I, spoke, I speak for me. Um, you've done an outstanding job, and you've thank listened. You. Uh, you've responded to some of our uh, recommendations, uh, and I, I can see growth not only in the numbers but also in the uh, records. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with your leadership and your commitment. You know, I see you with all the games and stuff, so I, I know you're around and you're active. So I, I for one, would like to thank you for your, uh, for your uh, dedication and your hard work in terms of uh, advancing the athletic program. And also, uh, to build on what uh, Mr. Sweat said, your reporting uh, is, is taking a step in the right direction. So um, I think I speak for the board, and thank you very much, and it was a very, very comprehensive report, and I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. I, I enjoy it. I really, really enjoy working here. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your candor. Um, the next uh, piece of business is Mr. Palladino. You're still up there. Hey, you know. <laughs> just can't get rid of me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to start off just reminding folks because uh, every once in a while I'll get a phone call asking about this. And I, I just want to remind folks we are fully accredited. Uh, with NEASC, and that will remain for another seven and a half years. So I just want to preface that. Well, for the record, I didn't say what you're going to be doing. Mr. Palladino is going to be speaking to the progress report for the NEASC accreditation. Thank you. And I'll reiterate, seven and a half years of accreditation. Certainly we have some work to do, as all schools do, some reporting that's required. And uh, today I am uh, reporting to you on our two-year progress report that was due on October 1st of 2013. And I'd like to uh, acknowledge we had a great committee with a great cross-section um, of teachers and administrators from Wareham High School. And we're going to be in a position this summer where we're going to have to open that committee back up again to respond to the recommendations uh, from NEASC. So I'll start off with the commendations uh, that the uh, NEASC uh, committee um, acknowledged in this report. And um, certainly I'd like to talk about we have increased opportunities for teachers to collaborate, including common planning time and in-service days. It's kind of ironic that we mention in-service days because they're all tied up with NEAS. So that was something we were cited on now that we have in-service days to provide professional development. We're being uh, commended on it. But uh, ironic. But anyway, the new schedule has worked out great for common planning time. And uh, every other day, the whole department has a prep period together. And it's, it's, it's common prep time uh, contractually but it's nice to know that if you need to see a colleague and you're in the science department, they're free uh, and you can speak with them. If you need supplies and they're in one classroom, you're not disrupting the classroom. So the common prep time has really worked out well and it's allowed teachers to plan together, to prep together, to assess together. It, it's worked out really well for them and they're uh, very appreciative of that. Teachers uh, in multiple departments who are taking advantage of common planning time to collaborate about assessments and curriculum the provision of three full days and six half days of professional development activities and certainly want to thank the committee. We started the early release days for the high school, for NEASC, and we continued on with those early release days. They have been very helpful. The steps taken to raise the level of awareness of the school's core values and beliefs, uh, and th those are revisited every year. The professional development workshops focused on differentiated instruction and technology, and I certainly want to thank Jan and the curriculum office. That has been great. Uh, some recent ones that we've had was the teachers were able to select the PD. Uh, the uh, reviews on that have been very positive. The use of student portfolios to collect evidence of student achievement of the learning expectations, and we're now reporting out on those, which is great, uh, and that's worked out very well. 
the formation of vertical committee, uh, curriculum committees in English, math, and science to create curriculum maps that align with the Common Core state standards, the extensive work done to ensure two-way communication between the high school and the sending schools, such as the STEM committee and the K-12 through vertical teams in ELA and math, and we hope to continue those um, moving forward. The use of, uh, should be Rubicon Atlas, uh, which is an online tool to document curriculum. Uh, teachers have really uh, grabbed a hold of that, and we, we still got some work to do, don't get me wrong, but we're uh, definitely moving in the right direction. Increased use of rubrics with corresponding uh, performing tasks, and the practice of summer reading, which ironically we just solidified this week, the summer reading, uh, which, will, which includes the entire school community and the resulting school-wide dialogue. So um, those are some uh, accommodations, and they're equally pleased. I'll just go through these bullets here. The alignment of the school's 21st century learning expectations to the teacher evaluation system. That's been very positive, and I know we spent some time uh, myself on the committee with many other professionals ironing that out and we're still working today, they met today. The opportunities for teachers to choose workshops related to te technology integration based on their needs and interests, uh, spoke to that already. Uh, the efforts by teachers to document students' progress in meeting school-wide expectations in power school and through the use of portfolio assignments. The increased efforts to identify and engage families who may be disconnected from school, and that's an ongoing thing. We're constantly uh, trying to keep the folks engaged um, that have uh, students in our school. Um, the improved wireless access in the school building. We were very fortunate over the summer uh, as part of that uh, money from town meeting. Our school is almost 100% wireless, and I know Michael and I spoke the other day about the summer uh, getting us to that 100% wireless. And we're, we're probably 96% there, so it's uh, just a few more beehives in the, uh, in the ceiling, and we'll be good to go. Uh, the survey conducted to assess the effectiveness of the library media program for the students, the assessment uh, conduct conducted to the developmental guidance curriculum, the implementation of the new schedule that provides an eight-period day for students allowing more course choices, including a range of new electives, the support of local businesses and the Wareham Education Foundation in providing additional funds for uh, cultural and enrichment activities for school programs, uh, purchase of 122 new computers in the past two years, and the thoroughness of the report that we presented uh, done by our professional staff and our, uh, and our uh, committee. So. That's the positive. Now we'll talk about the, uh, I'm going to continue on with positives because uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the three areas that they highlighted that we have to do a special uh, report on that's due in March of 2015, as I spoke with Michael the other day, hey, the first one and the third one are taken care of because the roof, as, as we mentioned at town meeting, uh, was approved. So we'll cross off that first bullet, report on the status of the building roof replacement. Uh, on that report, that roof will be uh, full, uh, installed and functional at that point in time, so uh, excited about that. And uh, I'm going to skip to number three because uh, we are in the process of finalizing uh, the LCD projectors in every classroom. Um, right now they are uh, working on the second floor, so within a few weeks we'll have those installed and uh, we can cross that one off as well. So Michael and I have been meeting on the one in the middle. That's going to require a little more work and I'll, I'll touch on that. Um, we, the NIAS committee was not excited about portable classrooms. That's just something that uh, they aren't excited about. And we didn't do anything moving forward because we wanted to see how they responded to our report uh, where we said it's a valuable uh, area of our high school for our students, specifically the JROTC students. So they responded positively uh, to us uh, questioning uh, their recommendation on that. And so moving forward, we will now put some where we were being somewhat forced to shut down the portables and we were putting money into it. So we did neglect it a little bit over the last couple of fiscal years with the uncertainty. We didn't want to put some good money into something bad. Since they have accepted uh, our plan, we will now work on carpeting and doing some light construction work that needs to uh, occur in those areas. For those of you who have been around long enough, uh, those portals were actually directly behind me in the middle school uh, back uh, about uh, uh, 10 years ago, and they were moved to the high school uh, when the new wing was put in the middle school. So uh, they're probably uh, hovering around 40 years of age and, and need some TLC moving forward. So that's an area uh, Michael and I have spent some time on uh, making sure we're going we're gonna to replace the uh, carpet and uh, put some tile like we've done throughout 96% uh, of the high school. Uh, the auditorium is another area that um, 
I felt it was more important to deal with the classrooms because of the uh, percentage of time those are occupied as compared to the auditorium. Um, and uh, those of you that were there in town meeting uh, saw there's, there's some need for some work between the replacing the carpet and uh, doing some work on the seats that needs to occur there. Uh, the stair treads are, are getting, uh, unfortunately, they're worn down and there's going to need to be some work on those. There's some HVAC ducts for internal classroom that need to be replaced. And we're hovering uh, 25 years uh, for almost all of the chairs and desks and uh, file cabinets, et cetera, at the high school. And it, we're going to have to start coming up with a plan to start replacing some of these chairs and desks uh, before the, everything starts breaking down at the same point in time. So those are some things we're going to be working on. The last piece, the doors. And um, I know that there is a plan. These are all on my capital uh, list as well that is turned in every year to the business manager. We're hoping that if the override goes through, these things can be dealt with over the next few years uh, because there was uh, some money that would be allocated, or there is going to be some money allocated for um, capital expenses for the different public buildings, and that's an area where this could be addressed. And uh, if it doesn't get approved, we'll, we'll do our best to address it uh, and come up with a five-year plan to try and take care of some of the, these issues. But um, there's a lot of work to be done on that second bullet. I can certainly pause or just continue on with uh, there's only three more bullets if, I, if, if it's okay. Um, these are areas they want us to report on. Good news, Michael, they're not going to cost us uh, much money. But um, updating the progress on creating portfolios for each student to demonstrate achievement of the learning expectation and describe the way that students and families are informed of these achievements. And we really hope to get the portfolios to, to go to digital. Uh, that's, that's one of our goals. I know Josh, you know, he mentioned the technology. We're hoping to improve the technology to the point where we can do away with the uh, three to four inch three ring binders and, and digitalize everything um, and get moving towards that 21st century uh, expectations that we have. Implement the plan to identify and engage disconnected families. Ironically, we were commended on that a, a, a few uh, sentences ago, but it's an ongoing issue. And uh, you, you know, new people come in every, every year, new students come up and through. And I, I think I speak for all principals. That's something that we work on daily. And uh, I think we're doing a better job as a district, and certainly as, uh, at the high school, with that. And, and sure that all teachers provide students with corresponding rubrics prior to summative assessments. And I think we're making great strides in that area. And uh, again, those areas aren't going to cost us any money. So I I'm really happy. And I, and I feel that uh, when we do that uh, special report, uh, we will move up in status. And uh, we will not be, uh, as approximately 130 schools are on this, on this level, we'll move up to the uh, top tier uh, when we turn in that report uh, on the special report. So certainly, uh, we'd love to entertain any questions you may have. Any specific questions on the report? Mr. Swat? My unofficial survey of some of your best students. <laughs> I'm glad you acknowledge they're our best students. <laughs> suggests that the technology area, and specifically the PCs that are in our building, are not dependable uh, for use in general and I wonder how if assuming that's true how has the even the um, not draft use but uh, the experimental use of the park testing been how has it been going and can you envision that being a problem when a much higher percentage of the student body is using them for that purpose Believe it or not, the, the POC test went really smoothly uh, from a technological standpoint. The issues that we had with the POC pilot, which we, we had basically half the uh, 11th graders uh, participating in an English exam. You English said is half? Just half, correct. The issues that we had were issues on their end and not on our end as far as the technology. They were issues with logins that weren't working, things of that nature. It wasn't really a Wiham High School, Wiham Public School issue with technology. I certainly would love to get an email on what, air, what um, computer labs, I would assume, is what we're talking about are unreliable because, um, uh, you know, anytime you have technology, there's going to be issues here and there. But I, I think our reliability uh, has increased drastically and our, our part-time tech power has done a great job of making sure things are up in a timely manner if they do go down. So certainly I would love an email on the exact location of that. But uh, 
I think we're doing a better job of, of keeping our labs and our classrooms that have computers in them up and running. <coughs> the hard part is it's, it's an aging fleet, and um, although we had an infusion of technology, this report is a few years uh, old on the, on the technology. We really haven't brought um, teacher stations or, or classroom stations in. We've done a good job with the iPads and the mobile cots now. So uh, I think that's the direction we'll be heading in moving forward. My goal is to have every department uh, to have it at, the, at their, uh, to be able to access one cart for each department moving forward. So I think you'll see us going away from the desktops and uh, moving more towards uh, portable wireless uh, technology. So you expect to do park using iPads or equivalent? Correct. We'll still have the uh, these will be the uh, desktops will still be available. The one obviously some of those are, are fairly new, um, but I would I would envision since we're going to be testing at least two times what we tested here, we're going to have the whole a whole class, one whole grade level. We'll have to have some transportable wireless devices, whatever they may be, moving forward. Second question I have: I was um, at a meeting on the board of directors of the Massachusetts Association of School Committees, and. Somewhat to my surprise, I found out that parts of the state are in somewhat of a semi-revolt against NEASC. Now, I think that is more the superintendent's association than it is the school committee association, um, but I wondered if you or our superintendent had any comment on whether the NEASC um, process from a cost-benefit perspective. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can we just keep it to the report, Jeff? <laughs> we're way off on a limb here. The if if, should be if, I, can, if I can say one thing, and it, it, it pertains Go to ahead, this report. I don't want to get into a big lengthy debate on whether we should do NEASC or not. I, I think the piece from the MSBA that put us over, over the top in regards to them accepting us into their uh, program for the new roof, the accelerated repair program, was the NEAS report. Now, we could sit here all night and talk about was it worth it, what does it cost, what are the benefits, what are the negatives. It, it, if we didn't have that roof, we were going to be in trouble moving forward. It's, it's getting bad. And it was funny because it rained just a few days ago, and the kids are like, are you going to go around and take pictures? <laughs> pictures are done. New roof goes in in August. Um, so without NEASC, I'm confident we wouldn't be on the MSBA's list for reimbursement at 68%. I'm sorry, Jeff. I think it's an important subject, but I, I'm, no, it I'm certainly prepared to drop it for the moment. No, go ahead. I mean, I just, I just don't want to get off on a tangent because we have still a lengthy agenda. And I, I, we need to just ask our questions based on the report. Then, then I would, would like at some point in time, it doesn't even have to be the near future, uh, for us to, to have a debate about the value of NEAS. That would be fine. We can put that on the be agenda. Because it's a huge effort on the part of the staff, which has could be redirected in other in other ways. No, it's a huge effort. You're absolutely right. right. It, right. It, it's only 10 years, right? Every 10 years. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Flower, do you have a question on the report? Um, a qu uh, comment, I guess. Um, I'm just really glad that you started uh, with the first words out of your mouth saying that we were accredited. You know, and, and it's amazing that I I talk to parents <laughs> at you know parties and dinner and. And, and the, the, the kind of planning, you know, sending kids out of the schools. And I ask why. It's like, well, this, we're not even accredited. I'm like, what are, you, what are you talking about? We never lost accreditation. And the perception's out there that we did. And I'm sure you run into that. You must. And, 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 and I mean, we're on warning. And, 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 but that, so, no. so we're over 100 schools in the state. Yeah. Right, right. But we, 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 have, yeah, we have accreditation. I guess my question is, best case scenario, when can we get off warning? I anticipate in a little over a year from now we'll be off warning. That would be um, great. In March uh, 2015, a report goes in. I believe they'll read that uh, in July, and so we'll, we'll know shortly thereafter. And I, I'm very confident just the roof was just such a big issue, and if you saw the number of areas where they questioned the integrity of the roof in the report, um, I'm pretty confident between the report, the LCDs, and what Michael and I have planned for the summer uh, to fix some of the uh, – the, the plant issues that we have, the small issues that we have left over, yeah. we're going to be in good shape. I'm just so surprised at the perception. I mean, close friends of mine who I thought would know better or people involved in the schools who I thought would know better think that we don't have an accredited high school, and we do. <laughs> so, That's thank level you. one. Thank you. It's level one. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Anyone else have a question on the report? Mr. Lazarus. I don't have so much a question as uh, a couple of comments. First of all, 
having been through two of these at the high school, it's like having root canal without Novocaine. <laughs> they are horrible. And I have, just as an aside, I would love to get into this discussion that Mr. Sweat We'll get it on the agenda. On. On the, but to get to the high school, I really am excited about the fact that you have accomplished and the staff and the students have accomplished what we needed to accomplish at the high school. When we first got the recommendations and citations from NEASC, uh, we looked at each other and wanted to blow our brains out <laughs> because it was not a particularly good report. And to see what's happened over the last two years is absolutely fantastic. So I really don't have a question about this, but having been through these things in the past, uh, I think that they're doing a terrific job where we are now as opposed to where we were two years ago. And you know, we have a tremendous uh, staff base at the high school and tremendous committee. I mentioned the cross-section, pretty much every, every department was represented by the committee that filed this report and I hope that we can post it again in the summer, get those folks back together to tidy up this report and uh, like I said, hopefully in a little over a year from now, uh, we'll have the full accreditation, the highest accreditation you can have without warning and uh, be one of the top 10% in the state. That's where we want to be. Any other questions or comments on the report? Yep, I just had one. I have to agree with Mr. Lazarus when two years ago when this report came in front of us, um, you know, just the amount of uh, comments that they had were unbelievable and I just want to commend you as well as the staff for what I think just attacking the report. A lot of people might have, or a lot of school districts or, or schools might take a look at the report and go, yeah, we have to do some stuff and my hands are tight or whatever, but you guys just took this attitude of we're going to attack it and we're going to basically just um, completely uh, blow them out of the water, you know, and that's exactly what you guys did. So I just want to commend you for that. I think that the only piece when I read this was around the implement and plan to identify and engage disconnected families. And I know that that's a struggle probably for every school in the Commonwealth and in the country, and you could always do more. And so I, I would assume that that is probably one of those things that they drop into every single report. Um, but I would love for us to explore a little bit more around that. And so I know if we're talking about future agenda items, just around from a district standpoint about what are we doing around engaging you know, families and even have it as an open discussion so then we can have some fresh new ideas, even from maybe some of those disconnected families and ways that they can re-engage. Um, I think that that ultimately could go into your report even in the special ones. That's what so, I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. And under my report, I'm going to make mention of maybe a, a, an, another um, superintendent's advisory committee that might might have that as its main goal. Okay. Thanks. Mr. Palladino, I have no questions. Thank you very much for your efforts. It's been a long day for you, I'm sure. I'm not going anywhere. So thank you. Thank you very much. I'm the last one on the agenda one more time. Oh, so. yeah, you're on. oh there you are. All right. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. All right. Moving along. Um, uh, Mr. McMillan? Yes. Good evening, school committee. Good evening. Good evening. As part of our financial reports, there are five different papers, five different reports, uh, because they included the reports from March as well as from April. But for my commentary, if I focus on April, since those are the most up-to-date, a figures. And if I start with the function summary, uh, overall we are in a we're in a slightly better position we were than we were in in previous months, a, largely because we were able to cancel out a number of purchase orders we'd created. That's expected expenditure related to out a cost related out of district students. Uh, students who were paying for special education services outside of the district. So we had created, a, we'd encumbered that money, so we'd, we, that was expected expenditure that was not realized because those students left the district or no longer required the level of treatment they were, we had expected. And so by, as that was no longer the case, we updated our figures and that's shown that we're in a much better position than we had previously thought. And that's really, I mean, 
that's just you know that's indicative of some good financial planning and expectations ahead of time. So overall, I think that puts us in a little bit better position, and we continue to watch all those numbers. Uh, there's a there are a few places that are now running into deficit, and at our next meeting I'll come with a, some transfers to restore those funds to zero. I don't know if there's any specific areas or questions the school committee has first on the function summary report. Any questions specifically on the function summary and we're at April, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, anybody? Mr. Swat? It still looks, in a global sense, like a half a million dollar problem. Um, two, you're two percent off if you go to the very bottom, right? No, that's that's March. Mine. This says, I'm looking at a report that says, Friday, May second. Well, they, they both is that the date? Oh, that's the date it was printed. That. Yes. <laughs> Never mind. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. We okay? Yes. Okay. Because I was going to ask you, I don't understand. <laughs> I, I'm with you. Okay. okay. Uh, anyone else on the function report? Move on, Michael. All right. So I've also included the revolving accounts report. You know, at this stage in the year, there's not a great deal of movement on these, and you'll see moving from March to April, a lot of the numbers haven't changed. Uh, the ones that move around the most are school choice, transportation. And uh, also school lunch, uh, and all those. I mean, so school choice, we're just about coming to the end of that. We obviously saw at the start of the year a, d a reduction in the amount of money we're receiving in school choice, and that's now reflected in, as we get closer to the end of the year, that's reflected in the lower balance. The transportation still is in reasonable shape, but, but we have put aside some of that money that we have not been able to spend on new buses. And a you know, school lunch is in reasonable shape, though we have to keep in mind in school lunch, we have to pay at the end of the year, we have to pay for the health insurance for all the workers. You know, the town picks up that cost during the year and we have to pay them back for it. So those are the main movements you see on the revolving accounts. Any questions on that report? Any questions specifically on the revolving accounts? Mr. Spat? Transportation. If we, now that I've looked at April, yes. uh, on the function report, and I, and I want a specific, that looks like it's going to end up approximately 70,000 to the good. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, if, if we've now got an ending balance of 280 in the revolver, plus 70 in the um, operating account, that's a nice number to use to drum roll purchase some buses. Yes. So when do you expect that to occur and are there any impediments to doing so? So <clears throat> the first thing is, uh, as I said, I will be doing transfers towards the end of the year and some, some of that $70,000 may have to cover a deficits in other parts of the budget from I, the, within the LEA. Oh, within the LEA, the 70? Yes. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. However, that's not, I mean, that's not to say, plus there are some areas where you know, there are some costs. Hey, they were just in the middle of incurring for some bus repairs, but it is, you know, it doesn't detract from the general point, which is in good shape. But even the, the one uh, impediment. I'm sorry, Michael, but just even the 70 is an operating non net budget. Yes. Right? It's not technically, it's not the LEA, even though it's listed within the LEA it's on your report. Non it's non net. The expenditure is non net. That's the right. The expenditure is non net. Yes, yes so but how much we. So, allocate towards it. So movement of that 70 from non-net to net, is, that's not allowed, is it? No. It's, I don't I'll, think we can take that surplus and... Let me check. Because I, I know we can do that with budget. school choice. Wait a minute, Mike. But I, I just want to be certain... I will, ch I, will, I will double check. My understanding is that we are able to do that because... That money is just what we've budgeted for it. 
But it's budgeted under and the non net school spending. So, it would so if we can transfer it, it be used on an account yeah. that would be paid for under non net school spending. Michael, you want to comment? Yeah, uh, frankly, I, I think it would actually require a town meeting vote because that's what town meeting voted. So we Secretary. couldn't touch that at all. Yeah. I, I'm in agreement. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm uncomfortable <laughs> with the notion that we can take 70000 from non net and shift it into net without, without any problem. I mean, I, I tend to agree with Michael that it's even beyond the scope of because the school committee. To well, the first yeah. problem we get it to us. <laughs> well, putting that aside, that's, that's relatively easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I but, think you're right. But yes, the larger right. question is, yeah. I know from firsthand we've got an aging fleet still. Yes. It hasn't, that problem hasn't been solved. For what I'll call technical reasons, we were not allowed to purchase buses, well, how many months ago is this now? Mm -hmm. Six months ago. Uh, at least. So what is the status of, of um, purchasing some more buses? So that, would, that is part of our plan, but that will still require a town vote at the next uh, town meeting to give us the authorization to spend that money. Right. So, so the that current, would be our next fall, uh, the fall town meeting. So the current plan is to ask for, to encumber a portion of the revolver for the purchase of buses at that town meeting. At that town meeting. That's right. So we go into the new school year without any new buses. Exactly. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> I think it would break. Anyone else? Move along, Michael. All right, so the final report was a is a, a grid providing an update on grants. <laughs> it's the first still. time we've ever. Yes, I'm true. so excited. Yeah, yeah me too. Me too. That's true. Yeah. That's absolutely I just right. thought I deserved yeah. a round of applause that you yes. actually put it into this format. So uh, <laughs> it's a lot of information. So there's a lot of grants in there. Uh, you know, we're in the middle of the year, but the moment and I'm in the process of meeting with the, the grant, hey, the lead officials for the grants to discuss how we're making sure we spend the money down to the end of the year, although they don't all end at the end of the financial year. I don't know if there's any spe any questions about specific grants or any general questions or comments on the style of the, or format of the report. Questions? Yeah. The beautiful lady at the end. Oh. <laughs> Smart, too. Oh, you guys are going to let it go, are you? <laughs> I'm staying out of this. I'm asking to let it go. I'm sorry. Again. It's okay. <laughs> Please don't make him apologize to me again. <laughs> uh, the uh, quality full day kindergarten. kindergarten yes. Um, when we approved that two years ago, are we... Um, I don't know if you can answer this question or not, but are we, is the amount of money that's going into that account exactly what we expected? Or is it less? When we first oh, approved full day kindergarten, it was basically that it was going to be a break even yes. from the, the funding that we were receiving for paid kindergarten. It's all now free. So is that? Yeah, from what I understand, I mean, I wasn't, I have looked at some of the papers from back when that decision was made. And I think that, broadly speaking, the money coming in, and I've spoken to a director of curriculum about this as well, but broadly speaking, the money coming in is in line with our expectations at the time. I mean, there's, and I, this is something the school committee has asked, and I can bring back a report to go through it all in detail, because there's a lot of costs associated, like the transportation costs with the changes and so on. Mm -hmm. So. But from my initial looking at it, it does seem to be breaking, you know, doing ex pretty much what we expected. Okay. No, it would be great to be able to yeah. get that piece broken out. Okay. Second thing is that I know that um, one thing that isn't on here, and I can understand that maybe it wouldn't be appropriate on this mm -hmm. report, but we do receive um, miscellaneous grants, uh, what, donations, or so yep. 80 make piece, the wear and for education, things like that. I don't know if, how we can reflect so the most of, most of them are in the revolving accounts. Okay. So the the revolving so the revolving accounts 
so all gifts mostly will go into the revolving accounts so and they're not all necessarily detailed out here. Okay. But that might be something maybe we could do in a periodic, maybe once a year, give a list of all those. Or, or an addendum or to this. Yeah. Okay. And then just to be clear, the balances that we see at the very end, those are basically all the expenditures that you put on here is what we've basically um, paid to paid Ex date. Yes, expenditures, okay. what was paid at the end of April. So what we should expect that at the end of that grant that then there's going to be zero balances yes. and that continues exactly. to go down. Yep. Okay. Anyone else have a comment on the grant report? Mr. Flaherty? Uh, I share Ms. Vugan's <laughs> enthusiasm for this report. Um, as much as we try to bend over backwards and be as transparent as possible in every way we can, especially when it comes to the budget, there's always been this sort of gaping black hole when it comes to the grants. And that's because we don't have anything to do with them, really, as, as a board. I mean, we deal with the, the LEA budget, and, and um, you folks deal with this, and it's separate, you know? So I'm just glad that we have something to look at and understand better. Um, I actually do have a whole bunch of questions. Um, I noticed there are six CARE grants. Um, are those federal? Sorry. The, 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 I, I counted six CARE grants. Are those, are those federal dollars? Yes. <laughs> OK. Um, uh, now, a lot of times, a lot of times we have discussions on certain positions that are funded and stuff, and we always say, "Well, that's it's grant funded and stuff." But you know, when you lose the grant, you know, you're on the hook to keep that teacher if you want to keep to keep them. In this report, um, which which uh, grants are we at risk? Would you say of, uh, which which grants are vulnerable that we might lose and might be impacted? Because then that would fall into the LEA budget. So. Do you want to call yeah, up Jan? Jan Rattel, Director of Curriculum, well, will be able to help with some you, of this. Michael. I mean, if you want Jan to help to come up. I definitely want Jan to help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess <laughs> he doesn't know which ones are. But I don't know if Jan, you, you, you have in mind? Okay. I did tell. I did give her about six minutes warning. So yeah, she, she she's a pro. Some questions. <laughs> she's a pro. But yeah. To answer Mr. Flaherty's question as to what grants are vulnerable for being lost, we either need a magic eight ball or, you know, a, you know, crystal ball of some kind. Uh, it's eight hard ball to tell. Probably better. <laughs> eight ball might be better. Yes. <laughs> Behind it. <laughs> we can shake it a little. Ball right here. Um, for example, you'll see on there's a there's a grant listed called the Literacy Partnership Grant. This grant actually began nearly five years ago. It was a two year grant. Then we were asked to re to apply again based on programs that we had initiated, that they found outstanding. We got a three year grant. And I just received notice that a new RFP is coming out sometime this summer for another literacy partnership grant to continue targeted literacy programs in high needs districts, especially at the lower elementary grades. But then they might throw in middle school as well. So it's, it's, it really is sort of like playing roulette. You know, if you get lucky and it hits the double zero, you're going to do great. Mm. Um, if it's all black and you played red, you're in trouble. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. I think overall we have seen a slight decline. We have seen a decline in the amount of money we're getting from yeah, grants. We, yeah, we and should definitely has, track it now. Yeah. We, so we can see that in, in the end of year report. I can give some more information on that. Luck, I mean, I think it's been fairly gradual. So we've gradually adjusted to the new amounts. So nothing, there's been no cliff edge yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, which grants do we receive on this list that are solely due to the fact that we're a level three district? Any of the academic support or school improvement grants are directly related to the fact that we're a level three district. Um, However, many of the grants, such as the 21st Century uh, Communities Grant, which is the CARE grants, we receive that funding as well. One of the factors in the formula is a high needs district. To be a high needs district, it is both your income ratio, high and low income ratio, and your academic needs. So in other words, they look at um, free and reduced lunch numbers, they look at graduation rates, and they look at MCAS scores. So I guess this is 
I don't expect you to answer this because you'd have to add it all up to Michael or or, or uh, Ms. Rotella. But I mean, you know, one of the one of the reasons why we why I voted to hire the um, superintendent that that we did was because I wanted to, wanted her to get us from a level three to a level one district. Mm -hmm. So how much money are we standing to lose once we go to level <laughs> two, level one? You know, I mean. Well, it depends how many students we bring in as a level one district. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> You know, and, and I would add to that, what we're also doing is we're out looking for other grants um, as we continue to look at developing more and more programs, grant opportunities will surface and we feel like we will offset in different ways the grants that we lose but to continue to pr promote. In fact. We've been sent. We've sent people to uh, some national conferences. They were. They've submitted, and they will be uh, presenting at two more national conferences next year, which will put us in line for some grants. Okay. Uh, now, as I said, I mean, this from our standpoint, this has always been kind of a, a black hole. But when you total it all up, it, it's about a two and a half million dollar black hole. And now, is that number? reflected in the end of the year to, to DESE as far as, you know, actual net school spending? That, that, would that be included? It is included in the end of year report, but it's not part of the, the it is part of the net school, well, it depends which I mean, number I mean, you're looking at. If, if a Martian came down to the, you know, planet Earth and, look, and, and wanted to know how much it cost to run Wareham Public Schools, where would they find the total real number to do that? That is, yeah, that is reported in the DESE. If, if I, I it's not, it's not, so it's not Chapter Seventy, but no, not Chapter Seventy. Yeah, but but it would be added to the total net school yes. spending. Yes. Okay, I'm getting a nod. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, there, there's, there's always a disparity there. It's like, I mean, I see it. Yeah, you know, we always deal with a number that's around 26, 27 million, and then I see like 32 million. Yeah, you know, yeah, like what, what there's in kind and there's grants and you know, so but we have no control over that. Um, okay. Um, lastly, um, you know, like I said, we don't we don't deal with this, but but someone in the town office does. I presume the the town accountant sees this money, right? So so when we, I mean, when we're signing the bills, the, the bill schedules that we get every week is is do we have to do we have to sign off any of that money? Yes, so it's in there as well. Some of those accounting yes. line items are in there as well. Yes, exactly. Okay, so good. you'll see there's, a, there's just like a different number on this. It's a different page. number. Yeah. yeah. It is pretty long, a, pretty long numbers. Yeah, it's also, it is also, as I say, part of the end of year report. So when we are audited each year, they look at uh, some of our grants as well and they yeah. check our, their reporting. Okay. Right, and, and that's all I had. And then just, you know, absolutely so happy to, to, to see this. Oh, just one last question. And the very last item here, just before the total line, yep. it, there's a Title I FY13 Year 2 grant. Why, why is that separate yep. than Title I? Okay. That's true for both Title I and Title IIA. Uh, they are we are able to carry over. There's something called the Tidings Amendment. And through that Tidings Amendment, you can carry over grant 15 months mm. beyond the original fiscal year. So it is a budgeting tool uh, that we have used customarily across all the years I've been here in the district so that we don't, we consciously do not empty out all of the grant funds so that you are able to carry over and it gives you a little bit of a um, margin of error, if you will, or a cushion for the second fiscal yeah. year. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else on the grants? Mr. Sweat. Um, first, on full day kindergarten, Michael, is it fair to say that in addition to the money that we're seeing on your list, we're also getting Chapter 70 funds. That yes. is correct? Yep. Which are, and the benefit of that is substantially greater than what we're seeing here. Is that a, also a fair statement? Well, it's a little hard to extract that information because obviously enrollment has changed since the, enro the overall enrollment has gone down. And Meaning of, of, the, of the kindergarten class? No, of the whole district. Oh, okay. And you know, there's a lot of things we've talked about. The Chapter 70 formula holds you harmless as your enrollment goes down. So, so far. Although we yes, so far. So although we increased our kindergarten, we didn't increase it more than we'd fallen. So it's a net 
you know, so as our, our overall enrollment still went down, but was held to the total that it was previously. I see your problem. Yes. Okay. Um, and then, then a comment, and that is, is it really true that Title I is now less than $600,000 for this district? Yeah. That is a pathetically yes, nice. small number compared to what it was, and pathetically small if you divide it by the number of children that it's supposed to support. Uh, I am just aghast, uh, but that's just a comment. We have repeatedly filed um, with the, Depart the Federal Department of Ed over Title I because of the formula they use. The formula works against us because of our high incidence of quote unquote temporary housing. Uh, I, I'm not going to go there uh, with I respect guess. to the chair and the, and the long evening, but the, <laughs> it, <laughs> I, I, I could I could go on and and have but a diatribe. But you know what? It's, it's it's a conversation we need to have. I think. I, your your call, but I'm no, no, I'm appalled. I mean, not tonight, but we need to have I, that conversation. I, I'm with you. Thank you. Anyone else on the grants report? Great job. Great Thank job. You. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Mrs. Rotella. I just have one Great question, welcome. actually. Yes, Mike. <laughs> oh, you're not allowed to ask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder when we'd like to schedule this information to come back to the school committee, because obviously we've done this once, and I wonder if it'd be worthwhile to do this maybe quarterly. You know what, I, I think quarterly might not be, there would probably wouldn't be that much different. I'm thinking maybe semi-annually, yeah. twice a year. Okay, and maybe I can do at the same right. time, I'll do the student activity accounts, and um, right. then I would cover it. And, and I hate to make Michael feel guilty since he's done such a great job, but I would still like to see the in-kind report. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Well, we talked about it, do wrapping up at the end of year. Yeah, I would too. Okay. Definitely well, we would like to that. see that. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda, uh, superintendent's reports. Thank you very much. I would like to ask the committee to accept the gift, a hundred dollar gift card from Stop and Shop from the Wareham Democratic Town Committee. This was used to provide lunches to students during our April vacation. I would like to also share that we served close to 500 lunches to students from three different locations during our April break, and that was over four days. So again, thank you to the Democratic Town Committee, but also thank you to everyone else in our community that donated. So moved. Second. All the, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Five zero zero. Um, I would like to request a meeting next week, if possible, on the 14th of May. And this would be to review FY15 budget information. At the same time, I would like to ask for an executive session to review personnel, a personnel issue. I did, I did talk to um, um, the superintendent on this, and I concur that I think probably a meeting at this point in time relative to budget adjustments, uh, line items, and, and uh, personnel um, issues uh, might be in order. That was the f Wednesday the 14th. Of course. No? It, it doesn't work for me. I have a board of directors meeting of mass that evening. Uh, yeah, yeah, wow. Well, what Marlboro time does that today. start? Well, it's way up in Marlboro. It starts at 6. Uh, well, I know it's not tradition, but could we do it another day next week? I, I, I think I can do it. On, I can do Tuesday, Tuesday, or, Tuesday or Thursday. Huh? Tuesday, Tuesday or Thursday. Either day is okay with me. I can do Tuesday. No. Mm -hmm. I hate to be the problem. I've got another board meeting that evening. Um, I could do I could do Thursday. Thursday, except that I think the superintendent's advisory committee is meeting Thursday at night. Um, hmm. Maybe we could follow that Thursday. Was that too late? No. If we could meet at like six forty-five. 
Which on one? On Thursday for our meeting. Six forty-five on Thursday. Yeah, we'll do and, until we like, can post whenever. it anytime we want. I appreciate the committee's consideration. No, again, you need we need you there. Well, thank you, but is everybody okay with that date? That was Thursday. I think so. That's the sixteenth. Would it be easier to post? That'd be the fifteenth. 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 Happy. Yeah. Last May. 15th, well, what was your comment, sir? Post it at seven o'clock. Oh, keep everybody happy. No. I'm thinking. Uh, I think that I'm just thinking of the, the advisory. I think of, that's what I think. Well, I think about. Kim's working around yeah, that. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. Se so seven o'clock on seven Thursday. Seven o'clock. Okay. Thank you. Michelle, would you mind sending out a reminder? Because I don't know if he'll show up in here. But the, the meeting is going to be exclusively budget and uh, executive session on personnel. Yeah. Where is it going to be held? Um, high school library? I mean, middle school library? No? Is it taken? We have to check. We don't know. We don't know. We'll let you know. TBA. Is this a, I'm sorry, did you say executive session only or no. open but hand? Open budget and meeting executive. and executive session, okay. yeah. That's going to be kind of like a workshop with an executive session. And finally, uh, Superintendent Safety Advisory Committee, and I, if this could go on to your committee mm -hmm. appointments, that would be great. And then that. So you want to reconvene that? I would like to form it and reconvene, yes. Okay. And then this will complete my report for this right. evening. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we have school committee reports. I'd like to go last, if you don't mind. Jeff, if you can report on the day of the hill. Um, sure. I was um, going to my, I guess I've been to many days on the hill. Uh, last year it was abbreviated because um, the auditorium wasn't uh, available. This year was more normal, although the lobbying, which is the primary reason for um, day on the hill was primarily um, in the for about an hour in the morning um, first thing is last year I um, I was accompanied by I think it was five students and this year I was privileged to be accompanied by our student representative uh, Nicole Russo as well as another fine junior Ariel St. Germain um, we had presentations from the both the chairs of the education subcommittee meaning the senator and the um, senator son Sonish chang diaz plus representative alice peish um, and when we got to do the lobbying efforts both senator pacheco and representative susan gifford williams were available and i think i speak for our student representative and um, the other student who was with me we uh we uh enjoyed the time i think they enjoyed the time and we got our points across and yes mr palladino we took some pictures but they haven't come in yet and asap i promised to get them not only to you but our superintendent um and and they were taken some of them were actually taken by the um uh, by the official photographer for the state house so they should be high quality pictures when they do come and i will also get them to jamie if she's still here um the most important thing that came out of, out of the day, in addition to the lobbying efforts, was for the fact, and I have been, yes, I guess the word would be harping on this, uh, for a long, long time. The House, and I say the House in particular because the Senate has done this before, the House finally passed an amendment to convene a Foundation Budget Review Commission. What this means is that they are actually going to study the adequacy of the Chapter 70 formula, which has not been studied for only two decades. I was going to say 30 years. It, well, it's, yeah, it's about a little bit more than two decades. Um, so it gives us hope for the long-term future um, that they will start to recognize the true cost of providing a high-quality education to our students and that where you live will not be a factor in how high a quality that is. So I, for the first time, am optimistic that in the long term um, they, will, um, they will do something about the formula that is not only hurting Wareham, but hurting many other communities in the Commonwealth. 
the big problem, as was mentioned by multiple legislators, is, okay, we recognize it's, uh, it's not enough. Where do we get the money from? And depending on who you talk to, you get a different answer. Uh, so the source of the funds have not been uh, uncovered, but the fact that it's uh, everybody knows it's inadequate, now at least it's going to be documented, which will put some pressure on them because the Supreme Court will be watching. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Sweat? If possible, I'd love to hear from Nicole on her day. I promised that you wouldn't have to say a word because <laughs> she worked so hard today, not only in the school, but on the tennis court. <laughs> That's up, Nicole. If so, you're not ready. Nicole? <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. If you're yeah, not absolutely. ready, if you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to do that. Um, well, I think Mr. Sweat said it all. I had a... <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> I had a great time. Um, it, was really, it was really interesting to see other students that were there and um, hear some of their questions, things I had never even thought about before. Um, it was just a very eye-opening experience, great. to put it shortly. Thank you, Nicole. I'm glad you went. Any other questions, comments? Again, thank you, yeah. Jeff, for representing yeah. the Wingham School Committee. As usual, you did it probably admirably. With two great students. Yep. Okay, uh, next order of business is um, a brief report on um, vision for the school committee, my vision. And um, I really don't have a vision for the school committee. Uh, it's just my vision for Wingham Public Schools <laughs> in general. And um, I do have a statement, and I will hand uh, the committee a packet of just some sensible protocols that I like to operate under um, and it, it's a it's in draft form there's even some spacing errors on it and whatever um, but um, I'd like to um, defray any discussion on it until the next meeting after you've had a chance to read it and and digest it um, but I think it's good to develop some protocols and so that everybody's sort of on the same page and everybody has sort of the same expectation in terms of me running a meeting, being the presiding officer, uh, and trying to, uh, trying to do the business um, of Wayne Public Schools in an orderly fashion. So uh, my statement basically is that I really appreciate the faith that you folks put in me. And um, uh, even though I get tongue-tied and my brain doesn't work as fast as my tongue, um, I, I will try to do the best to um, represent the committee, the, the personnel, the school personnel, parents, taxpayers, uh, but most importantly, uh, the students of Wayham Public Schools. Um, I look forward to continuing uh, the fine work and initiative started by my predecessors. And uh, I, I look forward to working with all stakeholders in establishing Wayham Public Schools as a model school district, a model school district. So I think that uh, uh, our focus, uh, my focus will always be on establishing programs and strategies to promote excellent teaching and learning opportunities, but yet conform to established curriculum standards. Um, I will try to conduct productive, orderly, respectful meetings as the presiding officer. Uh, it has been my experience that this committee has been courteous and respectful, um, and uh, we agree to disagree agreeably most of the time. And I, I don't have a problem with uh, presiding over this committee because it's a, it's a committee of uh, individuals that care deeply about Wayne Public Schools and are respectful. So um, I, I just commit to maintaining a forum um, that expresses a free flow of ideas and to work to uh, better uh, Wayne Public Schools. For my own personal goals, and they transcend a little bit into um, goals for the school committee, but that's entirely up to the committee. But these are just my goals. But certainly you could, instead of, you know, you could certainly substitute the word chairman for school committee. And I've got 10 very brief goals uh, that I would like to work towards. Uh, and obviously the first would be to serve uh, Wayham citizens in a sensible, ethical, and transparent manner. Uh, the second, to be accessible and respectful to all school committee members, staff, and stakeholders. Number three, to foster a process for Wayham Public Schools to be active participants in the business of Wayham Public Schools. A Wayham School Committee to be active participants in the business of Wayham Public Schools. Number four, to maintain an open, collaborative relationship with all personal and labor organizations. To maintain an honest and open relationship with town leaders, 
boards, agencies, in a spirit of teamwork and collaboration. Um, to establish an ongoing process for the school committee to review operations and procedures. To establish a system of budget review and development that functions on, on a platform that will enable the committee to have thoughtful deliberations relative to budget categories and or individual line items. To act as a facilitator for ongoing professional development for the members of the school committee. To preside over a fair and unbiased process for the evaluation of the superintendent and to continuously work to establish strategies and programs that maximize funding potential for William Public Schools. So those are basically my, my personal goals. Um, certainly I think they can transcend into the goals of the committee. Uh, I also have included uh, some protocols that I'd like to have the committee review. I'll hand those out uh, on the new business. And uh, I've also, uh, for the committee's review, um, just roughed out um, some committee assignments and uh, or uh, superintendent advisory committees. If in fact the superintendent wants to continue with those advisory committees, some are new. Uh, we've had some discussions about them and so uh, I can just uh, uh, mention them. Um, some of these uh, some of these folks have already accepted these appointments but I I'll let, let you let you guys look at them and then if you if you have a, a druther you can bring it back to the next meeting but the policy review committee is ongoing and I have gotten commitment from Mr. Sweat to chair that committee and for Mr. Lazarus to be his assistant um, and then we would like to set up uh, we'd like to continue on or set up uh, superintendent's advisory committee for safety a superintendent's advisory committee for community relations, a superintendent's advisory committee for budget, a superintendent's advisory committee for curriculum review and technology, and Mr. Lazarus has uh, consented to be our representative to the Cape Cod Collaborative. So congratulations, Mel. Thank you. So um, without further ado, I will hand out these documents, and I ask you, this is all in draft form. Uh, nothing is cast in granite, but I would like to have you look at my goals and if you think I should have more or I should reshape one of them, that's certainly, I can certainly do that. And uh, like I said before, if you've got a preference on um, the committee assignments, uh, certainly we can do that. Um, and I think that just about completes my, my report. Any questions? We'll move on. Uh, looking forward to seeing it. Oh, um, okay. Uh, no, I got it. I got it. I got it. All right. Uh, oh, any other business? Any other business from the committee at this point in time? No. No? Okay, let me, uh, I will hand these out at the end of the meeting. Um, uh, if there's no other business, we cannot adjourn, but we'll have to individually uh, vote to go into executive session. Uh, then we'll we'll come back just to adjourn. Is that correct? The regular meeting. So, I don't know if there's any votes. are you going to take any votes after this? Um, no, no. In the regular meeting, no votes. No, just to adjourn. Um, so I I need to. We, we need, need to, to get. Move it to the library. Excuse me. Library. Okay. We're going to uh, uh, adjourn. Uh, not adjourn. Um, recess this meeting. And we'll come back just for adjournment. But I need an individual uh, motion to go into executive session for the purpose of grievance hearings, uh, memorandum of agreements, uh, and approval of executive session minutes. So moved. Well, yes. 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 We are recessed to executive session and we'll be adjourning to the library. Thank you. You're Thank you.